for your people upon this same death. God, we need your power, we need your strength. God, we need your help. We search your scriptures, study the word, but God, we ask that you would reveal yourself today. To have thy way in this place. God, I pray now that Holy will just sit down and you stand up. Oh God, you are the part I am clay. Use me for your glory. That the words of my mouth, meditation, of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh God, my strength and my redeemer. The Lord will say thank you and we bless you. Have thy way in this place. God, that you should get the glory. We need to hear from you, God. If we don't hear from you, we don't know what to do. So God, we bless you in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke, the 15th chapter and the 17th verse. And you will find these words according to King James. And when he came to himself, he said, How many high servants of my father? Have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. From the eighth part of that verse, and when he came to himself. I'd like to use the thought this morning a rude awakening. A rude awakening. And if I was to pull a subtopic, it would be you don't have to go down. To the hall When I was a boy growing up at my parents' house, one of the chores that I hated most was having to go down and feed those hogs. Every trip down to the hall pen reminded me that there had to be something better. Every trip down to the hall pen reminded me that this was not the type of place I wanted to be. Because at the hall pen, it is not a pleasant place. Matter of fact, it wasn't a clean place. Because you could find everything and anything down at the hall pen. And I decided having to go down and feed the hogs. Uh, although, although Brother Dana, I enjoy eating bacon and ham, uh, the trip down to the hog pen, it opened my eyes to the fact that there had and there is something better to have a with. Uh, recently, my brothers and sisters in America and the world, we have had a rude awakening. Uh, this pandemic has caused many of us to awaken to the fact that God is still in charge. Oh, yeah. This pandemic has caused some of us to look at ourselves and say that we need to get a little closer yeah. Yeah. to God. Uh, not only that, but in this season, we have had a rude awakening that racism is still in America. Can I get a witness in here? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yet, yet, yet there are some folks that are still asleep and trying to live life by their own merits. Can I get a witness? I don't hear nobody. But if we would just turn to God and repent of our wicked ways, God will heal our land. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, yeah. You are in, my brothers and sisters, for a rude awakening if you're trying to do it on your own. You don't have to go down to the hall, people, but repent and trust in God. In this morning's text, there's the story of a young 
plan that many of us are familiar with. We know him as the prodigal son. This young man lived with his father who took care of him and his brother. And the text said that the father had servants, and I can imagine that whenever his son needed anything, he could call upon one of the servants, and they would heed his beck and call. Why, in his father's house, this young man had food to eat. Why, at his father's house, he had clean water to drink. Fresh clothes to put on, and a fresh bed to sleep in. And everything that the son needed, his father provided. My brothers and sisters in this world that we live in, we have a father who supplies every one of our needs. Every morning he gives us a brand new person. Every morning, he grants us new strength. He provides food to call our tents. He gives us healing for our bodies. He keeps us cold in our right heart. And yet sometimes, like this young man in our church, we have the audacity to think I can make it on my own. But every now and then, God will allow you to have a room away. So I stop by to encourage the saints of God. You don't have to go down to the hall pit. For I heard the sunlight say, without God, I can do nothing. Without God, I would fail. Without God, my life would be drifting like a ship without a sail. But as we answer Jesus, the text this morning, Jesus said there was a certain man that had two sons. And I can imagine that this father loved his children. And he raised them the best that he knew how. I can imagine he made sure that they didn't want for anything. However, the youngest of the two sons came and said to his father one day, Give me the portion of good that falleth to me. I don't know, but this young man may have had some so called friends. The other one about so called friends talking in his ear about being. A daddy's boy. Some of them may have been telling him that you need to leave home and go and do your own thing. I can imagine men, they may have said to him, man, if I were you, I'd get my stuff and get out of here. Y'all know how those so called friends are. Can I get what you said? I can hear them saying, man, I can see. Those brothers out there on the block. If you leave your daddy's house, you can have your pit. Can I get a witness here? We we know all about those so-called friends. Man, we can have a good time. You see, I found out the enemy will always challenge you to do things that he or she. Is not for, no, that is not for your best interest. They will tell you if I was you, I wouldn't sing on the clock. If I was you, I wouldn't go back to church. If I was you, I wouldn't give that church my love. Can I get a witness here? You are doing too much. The enemy is always trying to get you to do something that is not in your best interest. Can I get away? When I stop at the table, if you listen to the end, you're in 
for a rude awakening. The text says, and his father divided unto them his lips. And not many days after he had gathered all of his possessions, he took his journey. Now, how many of you know that he's in for a rude awakening? Jesus said he took his journey into a far country. And there he wasted his time with righteous living. In other words, he endured everything but what he was taught in his father's house. You know how it is when we get out of daddy's house. When we get out of sight of mom. We'll do some things that we ought not do. Can I get a witness here? My brother and sister, when you start, when you stray away from the truth, when you stray away from holiness, when you stray away from righteousness, you will find yourself down at the hall pen. Can I get a witness this morning? The hall pen in our text, it represents an undesirable place. A place where there's darkness. It's a place where sin will lead you if you don't change your direction. The Apostle Paul says, for him, it was a domestic road. For the Prophet Jonah, it was the belly of a lot of fish. For the children of Israel, it was 40 years of roaming around in the wilderness. But I stop by to tell you this morning, you don't have to go down to the hall of oh, yeah. When I look at the church today, we can attest to the fact that the church is full of people who at some point in their life have been down to the hall of oh, yeah. But the Bible declared that we have all seen yes, and come short of the glory of God. So regardless of what position you might find yourself in this morning, the good news is you don't have to go down to the hall pit. Because the God that I serve, he will pick you up, turn you around, and put a new song in your heart. I've been redeemed, brought with the prize. Jesus has changed my whole life. Romans 5 and 6, Paul said that when we were yet without strength, in due time, time, Christ died for the dark. So we don't have to go down to the hall. Right. The circumstances of this part sets forth the full riches of the gospel of grace. It was grace that saved us. It was grace that delivered us. It was grace that brought us. This parable represents God as a common father to all humanity. He is our father because he is our portion. The hymn writer wrote, God is the answer in the name of me, in the time of me. But I suggest that he is all that we need. Can I get a witness in here? This parable also presents the children of me as of different characters. Jesus said that the father had two sons. One son seemed to be a solid citizen. He was quiet and reserved. While the younger son seemed to be volatile and impatient. Could not wait to get out of his father's house. You don't know anybody like that. So he can go and spread what the old folks said, his wild oats. Many young children are like that today. I can't wait to get out of daddy's house. Can I get a witness here? But I come by to tell you, that if you get in the hair, you're in for a rude awake. Do I have any witnesses in the head? The Bible 
what the Bible said that the young man came to his father and said, Give me the portion that falls to me. In other words, give me what I am due. But I'm glad this morning that the Lord has not given up what we are due. But he so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. I'm glad this morning that he didn't give me what I deserve. But he looked beyond my heart and saw all my needs. The text said that the Father divided under them his lips. And not many days after, the young son gathered all of his babes together and took a journey into a full country. And there he wasted his sufferings. All oh, that he had with righteous living. And in my mind, I can see he was in for a rude awakening. He finds himself in a sinful state. A state of separation and distance from God. The world we live in is a fuck country. And when you live according to the world, you are distant from God. Right. But I heard somebody say, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Yeah. Nearer, blessed Lord. Yeah. To thy cross where thou had died. Yeah. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord. Yeah. To thy wretched plea inside. Mm -hmm. You see, a simple state is a spending state. Jesus said there he wasted his suffering with righteous living. Can you see him setting everybody up? And I can imagine in my mind, Brother James, I can imagine them drinking their wine, drinking their liquor. And I can imagine like in the old western days, they would take the shot glass and throw it on the floor and break it because they were living a righteous life. Can I get a witness here? This young man was living a righteous life. I can imagine him uh, buying favors from all the women standing on the court. Buying, buying clothes. But how many of you know he was in for a rude awakening? A simple state of being is a wanting state. Jesus said that when he had spent all that he had, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And being and he began to be, he began to be in war. It is said that willful waste brings woeful war. So the young man finds himself in a war. Can I get a witness here? But I heard things say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fall. He makes me to lie down in Queen's house. He leaves me beside the still wall. What happened to witness to him? Jesus said so when he had joined himself to a citizen of that country. He sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And the very thing that this young man despised is where he finds himself. And he is in a war. My brothers and sisters, a sinful state of being will take you from being stirred in your father's house to being a slave out of all people. This young man, this young man who had a maid at his father's house is now slopping Paul in a book. What a rude awakening this must have been. Jesus said, but while he was down at the hog, designed to eat what the hog was eating. Sometimes when we try to do it on our own, we'll find ourselves in places that we don't want to be. Can I get away? We'll find ourselves designed to do things that we don't want to do. That we should do. Can I get away? So this young man down at the home. 
y define dice el mundo and why you down there with the heart Jesus said that he came to us. What a rude awakening. I got to get y'all out of here. But why did your man was down and they're designed to eat what the hog was eating? There was no so no called friends to offer a piece of bread. All his money was gone. There was nobody there to offer him a place. To take a bath or a clean set of clothes. But I heard the children say, I have a friend so dear to me. His love for me is so kind and of free. You see, this friend, I don't have to set him up, I don't have to pump him up, I don't have to buy him anything. Because he owns everything. But when I need him, all I got to do is call him up. And he will come to my rescue. Anybody know about this friend? You see, when the young man got down to the hall, all those who would, he was buying drinks and setting them up were nowhere to be found. All those who was patting him on the back while he was spending his money was nowhere to be found. So now he's down at the hall. No money, no clean clothes to wear, no food to eat. I wish I had a witness here. At the same way, when we walk away from God, we'll find ourselves uh, down at the hall. The cupboard will be empty. Can I get a witness? Uh, your shoes will wear out. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and you'll find yourself in water. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that we have a friend uh, in Jesus. Uh, so I have a witness uh, His name uh, is Jesus. He's still king. Uh, and Lord of Lord, uh, I stopped by this morning uh, to let you know uh, that you don't have to go down uh, to the hall of uh, But if you just look up, David said, I lift up my eyes and turn the heat up. My friend comes to my help. Uh, my help uh, coming from the Lord. Can I give you a chance? If you got a friend in Jesus, uh, all you got to do uh, is look up. Uh, you don't have to be dressed up. Just look up. Can I give you a chance? You don't have to stay sick. Just look up. You don't have to stay broken. Just look up. You don't have to be lost. Just look up. Jesus said the young man came to himself and said, How many times, sir, of my father's house have bad enough to eat? And here I am, passion with home. He had to rule the weight. So he said, I'll rise and go to my father. And I will say to my father, I've sinned against heaven and before me. I'm no more worthy to be called that son. He said, Make me as one of the servants. You may feel like you're fallen and can't get up. But when you repent of your sin, God will pick you up and dust you off. You might have the stench of sin still clinging to your body. But when you repent of your sin, now God will wash you white in the sky. Jesus said that yet while he was away from his father looked out the roof. So his son and he ran and met him and fell on his neck and he kissed him. I'm glad today that that why we was in our city. God looked down the road and saw us afar off. 
I'm glad that he didn't wait to come to us. He didn't wait for us to take a bath and wash away the sea. But he said, come unto me, all oh, you that are burned and heavenly, and I will give you rest. I'm so glad that he sent his son and he died on the cross. And that because he died on the cross, that we were washed by the blood of Jesus. You'll have a witness in heaven. When you repent, when you repent and come to God, God will make everything all right. And Jesus said that while he was in the way of the Father came and fell on his neck. Good morning, y'all. But I thank God for His amazing grace. For it was His grace that saved us. It was His grace that delivered us. Is there anybody in this house that thank God for His grace? Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for the grace that brought my liberty. And I do not know that why he came to love me so. But I'm so glad he looked beyond my heart. I'm so glad he looked beyond your heart. I'm so glad that he healed our people's right. And he came to seal my love. Aren't you glad that he's still making a way for you? Are you glad that he's still working on your behalf? You don't have to go down. You don't have to go down to the home page. But if you just look up and repent, God will deliver us. I'm somebody to tell you that if you're going any other way, if you're trying to do it in your own, you're in for a rude way. Can I get away? But if you turn it over to God and let God have it, God will work it out for you. You don't have to go down to a filthy place because we have a friend in Jesus. You don't have to do those things that the world does because. We have a friend in Jesus. And God has already made a way for us. There is something so much better. And if we just look up in our time of prayer, in our sinful thoughts, in our temptations, if we look up and let God have it, God will bring us out. Because we need to understand that the enemy will always challenge you yeah. to do what's not in your best interest. So don't be fooled by the enemy. Don't be fooled by those folks that are coming in your wheel. Don't be fooled by what you have. A folk saying that you look good. Don't be fooled. But look up. Because if you hear the voice of those around you and enemies, and you begin to walk in that way, you're in for a good way. God bless you this morning. May heaven smile upon you. Jesus is still saying, Come on to me. And I will give you grace. In my father's house, a minute in. If the word I saw, I was told. He said, I go away to prepare a place. Now, where I am, there you may be up. So we don't have to go down to the road. Because God has prepared a place for us through his son Jesus. In the Bible, describes it over there that walls are like task. Why would they find one of the hall of fame? When you can go where the pearly gates. Why would they find one of the hall of fame? 
where the blood flies. And you can go to a place where the streets are paved with gold. Why in the world would anybody come from the hall pen? When I say hall pen, I'm talking about head. When over there, the crystal fountain, you can drink. You can sit down and talk with the father and chatter with the son. You find out that there's no sickness, no pain. Why in the world do we want to mess up and go to hell? You don't have to look at all people. But go to Jesus. And he'll make it a God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We pray that you have been blessed by the word of God today. Take this word of God that we hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against God. So today, as we prepare the word, we want to extend an invitation to you for discipleship. There may be someone here that's sitting in this house. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. If you're here, why don't you come to Jesus today? There may be someone like that watching my social media. Facebook, YouTube. And you don't know Jesus. You don't have to go down to the hall. Jesus is extending his hands to you today. Why don't you trust him? Try Jesus. Somebody said he's all right, but I declare he's better than Jesus. So we stand on this And if you're overfed on your telephone, computer, television, however you might be watching us today, if you don't know Jesus, you don't have to have a rule of weight. So why don't you try that right now? And it's as simple as this. The Romans 10 and 9. The Bible declared that the doctor confessed our mouth. The Lord Jesus. And the battle was leaving. He raised Jesus from the dead. And I declare that thou shalt be saved. It's just that simple. The Bible also said that for with the heart man believeth and the righteousness. And with the power confession is made on the salvation. But the scripture says this Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. But you, I'll bet you if you're here, why don't you give your heart to Jesus today? Will you pray this prayer? Say, Dear God. That I am a sinner. But I also confess today that Jesus is the Lord. I believe in my heart that you sent him to die in my place. And God, for that, I surrender my life to you today. 
Save me, Lord. I want eternal life. I want to walk with you. I want to be with you. So God, we thank you today. Well, I heard your word today. That with the heart, salvation is made. And I heard your word saying that if I believe on you, then I should not be ashamed. So God, I said that today. And I thank you right now for salvation.